Hi, I'm James, and today on the desk we have this, which is the Dell Precision 3561 laptop. And we're going to be looking at doing some upgrades to uh, SSD, RAM, and the Wi-Fi card, along with how to service the cooler uh, and replace thermal paste. So we're going to start off, uh, all these screws on the base of this system are exposed, and we're just going to go around and unscrew these. All of these are retained screws, I believe. Uh, if any aren't, I'll pick it up as we go around. And there are different sizes, but because they stay in the base, we don't really need to worry too much about which is which. So the two on the front left now. And being a Dell workstation machine, this is uh, just done with a Philips PH0 size screwdriver bit. And these are quite maintainable machines uh, as they're aimed at sort of more high-end users. So we're going to take our pry tool and we have a line here on the back. So we're going to press that in to begin releasing the base clips from the system and just working along. Then other side of the hinge, other side of the ethernet port, and then coming down the opposite side of the laptop as well. And once we have the bulk of these released, we can then pull the base up and forward and remove it like so. And with that, we're inside the machine. Once inside, our first task is to disconnect the battery. And to do this, we have a cable here with a little pull on it. So the pull itself doesn't seem that reliable. So instead, we're going to get the pry tool in underneath and lift that up. The uh, pull there just lost its stick and came apart. Now the battery here is the 97 watt hour size one. Um, there is an option to have a smaller battery in these and then a hard drive fitted here or SSD. However, there are two SSD slots in the system. Um, so the recommendation would probably get the bigger battery uh, in here if you can. Likewise, you can go with M2 SSDs and remove the drive that you have here and put the bigger battery if that is what you have currently. So starting with the memory, and we can see the two DIMM slots here are already nice and easily exposed. And all we have to do is ease out the legs, and then we can remove our DIMM module. This machine would definitely support a pair of 16 gigabyte modules. Um, this is DDR4-3200. You may find uh, also, so there are, is the option of 16 gigabyte that is the highest that I know this system supports. Higher capacity modules may work, but if unsure, I'd go with 16 gigabyte modules. So to refit them, we simply insert with them pointing up slightly and then press down so that they click into place. And again, for the other one, inserting and pressing down. We also have two M2 slots and to remove the SSD, we can undo the single screw here. The drive will pop up and we can slot it out. And then to replace, slot back in and screw back into position. If you are replacing the drive, then we do have a video on how to clone the contents uh, of another SSD uh, of the original SSD onto another, which I'll include a link to as well. And if you're adding a second SSD, uh, then again, this is also a PCIe 4.0 NVMe type drive in the second slot. We can insert this, and then you will need to source a replacement screw, but that then just screws in on the other end as well. With this as well, this can take, so drives with uh, components on both sides, so that will press down and fit in, 
Um, so if it's got components both sides, it should still fit without major issue. But even now with two terabyte drives, you can get them where they're single sided. And there is an Amazon affiliate link to one in the description below as well. The Wi-Fi card on these is also replaceable. Uh, this is an AX210, uh, which is a PCIe and USB type uh, combined Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And undoing the screw and removing the little metal shield from here gives us access to the card. We can then use our pry tool to disconnect the two antennas and slide out the card. Uh, I believe if you have a vPro version of this machine, you would want to replace the card like for like to maintain support for that. However, um, if that is not something that you have, then you can always fit something like a BE200 to get Wi-Fi 7 support. Um, so because this has the little cover on it, we do need to reconnect the antennas um, before screwing it down. This is always a bit fiddly and the bit I help, hate doing on video. So we want to just align those and then use some pressure on the end just to clip that back into place. And the same for the second black cable. We can see which is which because they are marked on the, uh, on the label there for colour. So clipping that back in and then taking it straight back off. This is always one of the most fiddly tasks. And with that back in place, we can then align the screw and refit like so. Turning our attention to the cooler, and because this is a model with uh, Quadro graphics, um, this has the slightly larger heatsink, which covers both the CPU and graphics card. Uh, and this is held on by a total of six screws by the looks of it. And so we're going to remove those. Before removing the heatsink, we then want to unplug the fan by easing out the fan connector here. Then undo the screws holding in the fan. And with that done, we should then be able to get our pry tool in under the heatsink and lift it off from the components. There are some thermal pads on here for bits like the, um, so some of the MOSFETs and the GPU's memory. And we're not going to touch those here because we're not going to replace those pads. We'd have to buy some specifically, but we are going to renew the thermal grease or thermal paste, I should say. We can then use some IPA to clean up the original thermal paste. This is obviously in pretty good condition. Um, this machine's only seen some limited usage, uh, but for the sake of the video, we're going to clean it all up and replace it. Then doing the same with the heatsink. So being careful not to disturb the thermal pads that I'm not going to replace.
And with that cleaned up, we can then look at the fan. If just looking to clean the leading edge of the heatsink, then we do have this small gap here where dust can be removed from. If we want to remove the fan itself or the shroud for it, then we are going to switch to a PH00 screwdriver bit. And we have four smaller screws on this side. And the fourth here, it's quite tricky to spot being uh, black on black. And with that done, we can then remove the fan from the shroud. This then gives you obviously full access to uh, clean out the fan or replace it if you've had a failure such as a, a noisy bearing or seized fan. We can then just turn it back over, realign it and replace the screws. So with our cooler serviced, we can then replace our thermal paste. Uh, in this case, I'm using some GLID GC4 thermal paste, but I normally use just Arctic MX5, um, MX6, which again is linked in the description. And we're going to apply just a little bit of thermal paste to both the CPU and GPU dies. Then bring back our cooler. Align this into position and then returning to our pH zero bit we are going to see so there is numbering on the heatsink for the order that the screws should be done again in. It goes on to three So dangling our way back and forth. And number six. With that done, we then just need to slot back in our fan. So aligning this connector and sliding it back into place. And our cooler is serviced. Don't, of course, forget as well to screw back into place the fan uh, with the two screws we removed earlier. Now, our last item to look at is the battery. Uh, so this is held in with a number of screws. So I believe four in total. Um, what you will find is when you buy a replacement battery, they typically will not come with the cable. Uh, they'll use the same battery for lots of different machines, but different boards have different positionings of the connectors, so this cable is not included. So with the four screws removed, we can then remove the battery, and we will see that the cable on here is also removable. So with our battery removed, our first step would be to unroute the cable. This has a couple of pieces of tape which we also need to just ease off as we're going to transfer this over. So first piece, 
and then down, peel off the second. Then we get to the cable itself, and what we need to do here is just slot this out the battery like so. We then, to fit it to the new battery, would slide it back in and route the cable back through the same channel past the little guides. With this done, all that's left to do is get the battery refitted. So we're going to align it in the chassis, making sure we're happy that cable's pushed in far enough and we'll reach on this end and refit the four screws. With all our work then complete, we can reconnect our battery. So with the work complete, we can then take our base. We're going to align it on the front here, lay it flat and press down to re-engage the clips. And then all that's left to do is screw the base panel back on. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have, please give it a like and let us know in the comments uh, what you were able to replace or repair. And if you want to help contribute to the making of these videos, there is always the option to leave us a super thanks as well. Uh, otherwise, all that's uh, left to say is I hope you've enjoyed watching, have a great day, and thanks for watching.